Thank you. So, as you probably know, that I've been into astronomy for, for many years now, um, and I really just want to share my love for the subject with you, for all you budding astronomers out there that would like to, to start. And I think the first thing I can do really is, is to let you know where my love of astronomy came from, and that is from the ancients. And as you can see there, the ancient Greek um, Asclepius. And Asclepius is really well known for his amazing work on astronomy. And really, he was the, the founding father of all astronomy. And you can see the charts on the right here, which are navigation charts that we used back in ancient times um, to, to navigate on ships. Um, and you know, the ancient Greeks, when they were going around the Mediterranean, this is what they would use. And these are the plots that they made looking at the stars so that they could find themselves where to go as they wanted to move around the Mediterranean, discover all of the, the Greek islands and then start to move even further afield throughout throughout Europe. Um, because it was the best mode of, of transport in those days, about modern railways, it was much easier to, to take a boat than it was to, to climb over the mountains, which posed a, a huge issue for them. So these ancient charts, these astronomy charts, uh, which actually had a, a really fantastic name, they were called star charts. Yes, they were original, the Greeks. Um, they were made, as you can see here, this is a demonstration of how they originally made them. And it was all to do with the light pulses. And what they did was they had some really advanced little, basically reverse torches. Um, and these reverse torches were a wonderful thing um, that they invented in those days. And how they did it was they took in the light by using different types of rock on their sundials. And depending on how much light came through at different times, they could work out how far away those stars were in each direction. Um, and then they used the little amount of, of light that was absorbed by the rock, which they measured by putting their hands on and checking the amount of heat being given out. And they could calculate because of the heat, the amount of light that was through there, how, what direction and how far the stars were. And they used this to, to navigate with. And as you can see here, this is what the readings used to look like. We didn't have fancy color back in, in those days. So they did it all with little black and, and white lines to, to, to do it. And you can see on the left here, this is what they would record if somebody would be there and the blacker it is, the darker it is, the more light was, was coming in because the more heat was there. And what we've done in modern days is to translate that into what you can see on the right, which is a little fluorescent diagram here, which is our scientific version now with all our fancy electronic gadgets that we use to do the same thing, which is to monitor the amount of light coming through from the stars. So by using this, we can calculate the distance that those stars are, are away from us. And, and these days we're not uh, quite so reliant on it to, to navigate. We've got all our GPS and we don't need these. But it does tell us wonderful things about um, what else could be out there, what else could be out there in that solar system that we could be living with. Uh, and what's really, really nice about that is that you can see here, what I like is, is the ancients on the, the left, and this was using their protractors. So once they'd calculated the distance, they'd use these protractors to, to calculate the angles that these stars were at so they knew where they were going. Whereas these days on the right, you can see what we can map with our light. And we can see here with these little beams coming through that this is proof that there is actually life on other planets. And the little red bits, most of that is just natural light coming out from the, the universe that we would expect to see. And this is a, an infrared diagram here that's, that's been translated so that we can see it on a black screen. But you can see those two little areas, one in the middle, it looks like a nose, and one about where the chin would be if we made this into a person. That excess light is not coming from stars where we would expect it. So that shows that somewhere out there, that is being given off by extraterrestrial life. They're producing their own extra light, the same way as we do with electricity. And we know this because of the phase shift. And the phase shift is what is seen by this diagram here. Now, you can see that blue arrow there pointing that we've got this little gap in between what should be coming, what we can calculate from the distance that we know using those ancient Greek methods, um, which should be that blue line coming down here that you can see slanting across. That is what should be given out from those stars. Um, and the line on the left, now that takes into 
to account the, the differences that we might see because of changes in the atmosphere, the amount of cloud cover on certain nights. And there's always that little gap in between that we know that there should be either to the right of the blue line or to the red of the left line. That's what we'd expect. That bit in the middle, that is our proof that something else is going on. And this here is Jeremiah. And he was the one that first decided that this you know, was what was happening. And he was the one that first tried to explain this. But he was a little bit poo-pooed, if I'm honest. Nobody believed old Jeremiah. He was, oh, this is ridiculous. Of course, it's not because of extraterrestrial life. They came up with all these ridiculous theories about black holes and all sorts to try to explain why there was this difference in our calculated and expected amount of light from the stars. Um, but he was right. And we know he was right because of an amateur radio stamp collector. And he managed to prove this by capturing radio waves. And these radio waves showed that the light was reflecting back off the earth in a way that we wouldn't expect. And by using those radio waves, we could hear, we could tune in and get those in the right direction so that we could hear far enough to be able to actually hear the noise given out by these planets as well that we wouldn't expect. And a black hole can only explain the lack of light. It can't explain those differences in those radio waves. And that is why I have such a love of astronomy, because it has told us that ET does indeed exist.